first thing you need to think about is having something that you truly believe in uh, and that you're convinced is going to be valuable to your customers. Um, how do you get that belief in the first place? I think the first thing is to have some, some evidence that it works. For me, I've spent you know, almost 30 years now working with great young people uh, in Coopers and Labrand, now PwC, in Anderson Consulting, which is now Accenture, and then uh, in, in Tate Consulting, my own consulting business. So I had a, a huge wealth of evidence that great people can, uh, at a, can make a huge impact at a junior, at a, at a young age. Um, the second thing is that you need to know that your clients really want this service and that, that's the harder thing sometimes to test uh, because until you're actually out there providing the service and offering it, it, it to them um, you don't really know what the barriers might be internally for them and the, and the, and the extent to which the appetite uh, is there to actually overcome those barriers to bring your service or your product to uh, to that particular client. So uh, there is inevitably a leap of, leap of faith but you know, base it on evidence as far as you can and on appreciation that there is some space and gap in the market that you can really help fulfill. Um, the second thing you need to think about is as you start to grow the business, um, uh, don't allow what you, uh, what you believe in to become diluted. Um, at Grace we've placed a huge emphasis on the quality of the analyst population that we, that we managed to employ. Uh, they have to have you know, very high standards of academic achievement and they have to be ready to deliver on client side. They have to have great and mature competencies. Their attributes have to be fantastic. They have to be technically aware. Um, if you allow that, that quality to slip, you're not giving clients what you originally gave them. They're bound to start to question, you know, are you growing at the expense of quality? So you must fundamentally uh, retain that value that you first started out with. And secondly, it's very easy also to be distracted or try to broaden out the scope of what you offer uh, to those clients as, as you see adjacent opportunities. I think you need to be very careful about doing that because again, as you dilute your focus, again, you dilute the message you're offering to clients and you dilute the specialism that they believe that they're getting from you. So again, I think it's an essential part of our strategy to maintain quality at the levels that we uh, aspire to and to retain that focus on uh, a particular segment of the market, which in our case is, is business change and transformation. Um, it's a cliche, um, but in a people business you need to care about people. Uh, when you've got a workforce that's very often remote, it can be hard to retain those ties at the level that you would like. Um, but you need to have a process and a program that shows that you're, you've got regular touch points of engagement. But sometimes you can only really show how much you care um, when uh, individuals are going through challenging personal times or personal circumstances and then you can come into your own and show them that actually um, you know, the organisation uh, really does care about the individuals that, that work for it and you, and you give them the time and space they need to, to adjust to those changed personal circumstances. Um, obviously uh, in a smaller business um, you can't uh, it's very hard to or you just can't allow underperformance and non-performance to to, uh, to, to to go on um, difficult decisions sometimes have to be made in our case we've been very fortunate they've been very few and far between however um, there is really no slack in a smaller base a smaller business to absorb underperformance and you're gonna have to need to take some difficult decisions uh, in a smaller business uh, if you want to maintain the standards and uh, retain the reputation that you've developed at the, at the outset of the business. I think as a fourth point I would say that you know leaders in a small business need to set the tone for the organisation. You know that means high energy, commitment and motivation. You probably wouldn't have a business of your own if you didn't have those attributes. Um, but it also means integrity and professionalism. Um, I personally have seen a lot of examples over the years of people putting short-term profit and gain ahead of relationships, ahead of what was right and ahead of their professional standards and I think um, you know you as an individual you need to um, not be drawn down that path and to retain um, you know your uh, ethical foundation about the way that you think that business should be done. And the final point I'd make is you know as a leader you need to have humility. Uh, um, I mentioned earlier it's almost 30 years since I started out in my professional life and every day I'm still learning. Uh, every day I'm making mistakes. Uh, even if it's a matter of being distracted and deflected from you know, the most important priorities. So uh, I think it is important to have that humility um, and in a smaller business, you know, to grow a great team, 
Um, you need to be part of that team as well as its leader. You need to show that you're willing to uh, get stuck in when the, the going gets tough and to roll up your sleeves and to, to help your colleagues to um, uh, help them achieve their goals. So, um, you know, it's not a sort of space where you can elevate yourself above everybody else and uh, simply order them around. That's not the way a smaller business works and you need to make sure that, uh, that you're part of that team as well as its, uh, as well as its leader.